we are experiencing a shortage of everything. This is not caused by one area of the supply chain. We are seeing chaos in all areas of the supply chain. The ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach are getting the most attention, with at least 60 container ships waiting to be unloaded. With too many ships to anchor, new ships are told to drift into deep water. Each ship can carry up to 12,000 40-foot containers. That's 720,000 shipping containers waiting to be unloaded. Not getting as much attention, some shippers are bypassing the west coast altogether and sending ships to the east coast. There are 24 ships off Savina, Georgia port and 8 off New York City port. Craig Gosar, Senior VP Seiko Logistics says, Everyone is so focused on Los Angeles, Long Beach, that the other ports are getting passes. Savina is a mess. New York, New Jersey ports are a mess. Higher consumer demands is leading to shortage of trucks, truckers, and port workers. Ships can't be unloaded fast enough. This causes a shortage of empty containers. The supply chain depends on cargo ships, containers, ports, railroads, warehouses, and truckers working in unison. Before current disruptions, the supply chain between Asia and the United States was running at full capacity with no margin of error. Kathy Roberson, founder and president of supply chain consulting group Logistic Trends and Insights LLC, says when you have a problem anywhere in the supply chain, it's going to have a ripple down effect like playing dominoes. She says if freight is late arriving at port, that means the time scheduled for the truck to be at the port is wrong. Now you have to go back and reschedule. This will cause additional delays and costs. Now you have to put items in a temporary warehouse if you can't find space. With manufacturing moving away from the United States in the last 20 years, we now rely on imports of manufactured goods. In recent weeks, we are seeing the largest traffic jam of shipping vessels in history. 90% of global trade is shipped by sea, 70% in containers. Christopher Tang, a professor at UCLA's Anderson School of Management, who has consulted for companies such as Amazon and IBM, says this is a wake-up call. He thinks globalization was under the assumption that global trade is frictionless and adds, it's time for the U.S. to rethink how to coordinate the supply chain. And for some products, it's time for us to produce more supplies in the U.S. With governments around the world giving stimulus over the last year, spending on manufacturing goods is rising, causing the fragile just-in-time system to crack. John Picari, Port Envoy to the Biden-Harris Administration Supply Chain Disruptions Task Force, says, As global commerce increased, as the e-commerce economy increased, we haven't made infrastructure investments keep up. Seams in the structure were showing last year, making the supply chain disruptions worse. The shipping industry is not the only sector seeing shortages. Labor shortages have hit record highs in restaurants, hotels, and other hospitality. Also, many factories are not operating at full capacity due to employee shortages. The U.S. Postal Service is reducing use of air transportation to save money. Isaac Larian, the founder and CEO of Toymaker MGA Entertainment, told Bloomberg, I've been doing this for 43 years and have never seen it this bad. Everything that can go wrong is going wrong at the same time. High demand with a limited supply equals inflated prices. These supply chain disruptions produce positive feedback loops. A positive feedback loop, according to science trends, can be defined as a system where one variable increases the quality of another variable, which in turn increases the occurrence of the first variable. These systems are unstable and usually ends in a divergence from the normal equilibrium, leading to one of two things, chaos or growth. We hear a lot of global supply disruptions, but these feedback loops leak into the domestic economy and different sectors of the domestic economy. The result can be seen in empty shelves at your local store. With trucker shortages, all domestic shipping is also affected. CNN Business reports shortages in snacks, drinks, candy, and frozen foods. Nearly 15% of frozen foods were out of stock during the week end, October 3rd, 2021. 18% beverages were out of stock, 16% snacks, and 15% candy. Eat This Not That reports an inquiry of shoppers saying there are nine shortages at their local grocery stores. Juice products, bottled water, bread, pasta, toilet paper, 
paper towels, lunchables, pumpkin, and meat. Costco and Sam's Club have recently reinstated purchase limits on some items. Across the U.S., we have a shortage of everything. Docks at ports for ships to unload, containers to ship goods, the logistics of moving empty containers to their destination, lack of dock workers, truck drivers, warehouse workers, factory workers, small business workers, thus leading to shortages of essential supplies, including food, household items, furniture, and almost any product that is manufactured outside the United States. Naveen Jaggi, the president of Retail Advisory Service, JLL, explained, we still have a very challenged supply chain. Many retailers don't expect any sense of a balanced supply chain recovery until the summer of 2022 or even later. That's well beyond Christmas. If you count the 60 ships off Long Beach and Los Angeles, 24 ships off Savannah, and eight ships off New York City waiting to be unloaded, that totals 92 ships. That would be approximately 1.1 million containers that need unloaded. Expect shortages and empty shelves to continue into the foreseeable future. The links to the articles quoted in this video are in the description below. If you enjoy content like this, click the subscribe button so you'll be notified of my next video. This is Blue Jay Prepper. Hope for the best, plan for the worst.